Welcome back to the show, friends. Our guest today, a very special guest. She is the Managing Director of Internet of Things Group at Intel, which means she might have the answer to the question, should everything be smart? We're very excited to welcome Bridget Carlin here. Thank you for being with us, Bridget. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, we're so excited to talk about uh, the Internet of Things because this is sort of a, a very broad kind of category, and a lot of people yeah. don't really even maybe know what specifically the Internet of Things is. Maybe we should start there. What is IoT, as we love to call it? So the Internet of Things is essentially taking everyday objects and connecting them to the Internet so that they can collect and share and analyze data so that we can extract more meaningful information. So in a nutshell, it's, it's taking things like uh, your phones, um, appliances, your cars, and connecting them to the internet so that we can get the data off of them and then understand a little bit more about what's happening with the device. So that will, what's the end goal there? The idea being that our houses, our things, our appliances will all better able to serve us, right? Right, and so the purpose of connecting these devices and getting data off of them is so that we can understand a little bit more about the environment, um, the conditions around you. These are translating into um, new types of experiences, new types of business models, and for, um, for many of us, uh, better efficiencies with businesses, with our resources, and being able to sustain our environment. Hmm. So let's talk a little bit about uh, smart objects, because every year at CES, we see uh, amazing things at the Intel booth. It's one of our and favorite. And a lot of silly things in of, other, all, of, all over the place. Yeah, for sure. So we've seen, <laughs> uh, we've seen spider dresses. We've seen, yeah, I mean, we've seen spider dresses. We've seen interactive baby onesies. Yeah. We've seen great, uh, we've seen laptops with Intel chips in them. I mean, we, yeah. we see a lot of different products. Obviously, Intel does a lot of different things. So we don't expect you to know every single product that Intel's <laughs> ever put a chip into. But um, in terms of sort of trends that we've been seeing in Internet of Things, uh, what do you think are the most popular Internet of Things products or, or sort of ideas that we've really kind of seen bloom in the last maybe six months or so and going forward? Great question. Well, I think we're in a very exciting time. We're in an era of computing where customers are choosing experience over product features and functions. And what we're witnessing are three basic trends. Um, the first one is that we're becoming a smart and connected world. So all these chips that we're embedding into things are helping us make the device itself smart and then connecting it. So that's the first thing we're seeing. The second thing we're, we're experiencing is that the computers are gaining senses. We call this the sensification of computing. Where we used to see in 2D, now we get to see in 3D. Mm -hmm. We um, can uh, detect um, uh, temperature and motion and things like that. So that's, you know, we're gaining more senses from our, from our devices. And then the third thing is that the computers are now becoming an extension of you. So sure. we know how we take our smartphones everywhere we go. Now we have our smart watches, and we're seeing that more and more in devices where we're now becoming more seamlessly integrated with our technology. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned CES. That's, that, it's a terrific show, uh, a lot of really cool technologies. It's a great showcase. Um, but you see things like for sports. We now see what started with um, smart glasses. We now have, we have a partner called Oakley. Um, they're a Luxottica smart eyewear brand, and they've integrated voice in and, um, and storage and processing into glasses so that as you're a runner and you've got your sunglasses on, it can start giving you voice activated coaching. And oh, it's wow. one of the things that, you know, start to incorporate new experiences that we didn't originally expect out of our glasses. Right. So oh. new kinds of things like that. Yeah. And Keep I, breathing. <laughs> Keep breathing, Jeff. <laughs> Don't stop breathing, Go Jeff. Fast. Keep running. <laughs> Don't run too fast. Yeah. You might break your ankles. Um, that would be me. <laughs> like, don't run too fast, Ashley. You're going to hurt yourself. Um, so in terms of uh, one of the things that I have sort of noticed is s cars integrating with Internet of Things. So as you're driving home, you kind of let your car know, hey, I'm on my way home. Or no, uh, now it just sort of knows you're on your way home and it says like, oh, I should probably bring down the, the thermostat a couple degrees and, you know, like get out. It, I feel like now we're sort of training our cars to be our dogs where they bring you the paper and your slippers yeah. and, it's, <laughs> and you get home and it's like all very nice and cozy and stuff. <laughs> so do you think that um, when, when you are sort of managing the strategy of Internet of Things group at Intel, uh, what are the types of questions you sort of ask yourself in terms of, um, you know, is this something that Intel wants to get into? Is, mm -hmm. How do you kind of make those decisions? Because obviously, as we've mentioned, like Intel does a lot of things. And so how do you say like this also is within Intel's vision, but, but is pushing the envelope in terms of what can be done? 
Yeah, great question. I mean, you know, when you're thinking about strategy and what markets you should go into, what technologies are appropriate for that market, you first start with the customer. You start with, you know, what problems can we solve, what experiences can we make possible. And that really, in a nutshell, is how we start approaching um, innovation and that sort of thing. And I would say that, you know, for the Internet of Things, we, we look at the IoT in sort of two two basic segments. One segment being consumer, where you've got things like your smart watch and you know, different types of wearables. And in fact, that's a, a really exciting area for us because analysts are telling us that we're going to have about 780 million wearables by 2018. Wow. So it's happening. I, I don't know yeah. if you have yeah. room in my body for that many. <laughs> I know, just, oh, just, just, just bracelets all the way down. Right. I, I, things you've never even thought of. Um, and then the second sort of bucket is the industrial side. And that, by far and away, when we think about the total economic opportunity for IoT, which is about four to $11 trillion globally, um, about 70% of that is coming from the industrial side. Sure. Really? So when you think about the industrial side, what does that mean? Well, it's transportation, it's retail, it's healthcare, right. um, it's smart and buildings. You even you know, had, I was going to say, you guys even had at CES this year a smart hard hat. Yeah. Yes. Which was really cool. That is so cool. That is with a partner called Daiquiri. Mm -hmm. And they took um, essentially our Intel RealSense technology, which enables 3D and that sort of thing, plus our processors. And they took what used to be the old hard hat, and they made it smart by putting in these technologies. And they created an augmented reality situation. So when you have an industrial worker out on you know, the oil rig you know, repairing something, um, and if he's up there and they say, hey, this part needs to be replaced as well, they can in real time send him the schematic so that he can literally see through augmented reality in so 3D cool. um, the schematic that he should work on and exactly where to go fix the part and, it, and it'll give him the instruction plus be able to do the real time collection of the data. So that is the kind of thing when we think about new experiences but really new um, product and, and production level efficiencies. Right. We never even thought that you know in the past. Yeah, it's really interesting to sort of think about the idea of convenience giving us more time to create or yeah. to to sort of pursue other interests like I mean obviously in the industrial revolution that was sort of the start of leisure time for everybody <laughs> yeah. so we were able to sort of have leisure time and now with robotics IOT and all of the different things that we kind of have coming together and converging right now we're starting to see maybe a second age of that where we're like okay so now we're increasing productivity in in, in the industrial market or increasing uh, convenience in the personal market you're sort of able to kind of get that sense of well what do I do with this little bit this little tiny bit of like two yeah. minutes of extra time that I have now, well, it adds up over time, like, what do I do with that time? Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, when we think about the crossover, where you can see IoT taking hold um, in the industrial side, like, let's talk about retail. So, uh, Levi's is one of our customers, a great partner, and they um, essentially uh, were trying to address one of the big retailer challenges, which is out of stocks. I mean, the last thing you want to do as a retailer is not have the right pair of jeans in the right spot when you go in and you want to buy them. So um, we implemented our Intel IoT platform, which also includes a, uh, an Intel retail sensor capability. And we worked with Levi's to um, read the data off of their RFID tags that are already sewn into your jeans. Oh, interesting. And so as the jeans literally move around the store, like the dressing room or on a shelf or something, the store knows exactly where those jeans are and knows that if they've um, been sold or if they're you know, stuck somewhere in a corner. So when the shopper comes in, they can make sure that they've got the right pair of jeans in the right spot for the, for the consumer. So awesome. the consumer benefits because they get the product they want, and yeah. the the retailer in Levi's case, you know, makes sure that they've got the right product at the right place. It's just like that story just for some reason reminded me of being a kid where you'd like take a bunch of clothes into a round rack and you would just like <laughs> pile them in there as a fort. Everybody I never did, did that, that, right? I don't think I did that. No? Okay. Um, just double check. Well, now they'd be able to find those pants much easier. I'm so sorry, uh, bull bullocks. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. Poor employees are like, that's Har where they are. Harris's, Harris's Co. Like, I'm so sorry. What What do you think is a is is a product or a an appliance or an item or an object in our world that is not smart that should be smart? Wow, that's a great question. I think um, rather than trying to answer that, I think you know what should be smart that isn't. It's sort of like I think the question is, what's next? 
Yeah. Because literally, you know, things, it, it really, it's up to our imagination. In fact, Intel um, sponsors America's Greatest Makers. It's a new reality TV show where we have inventors coming on that have thought of all kinds of things, like, you know, taking a glove that will now translate gestures into speech, you know, yeah. sign language, yeah, okay. right? You know, yeah. Yeah. Or helping a kid, you know, put some, the little Curie Intel processor in a toothbrush so that you keep the kid on track when he's brushing, you know, on the wrong we, direction. We that was the right? impetus of, like of this, asking yeah. you on. Is right? Like, Gun Good plays, they get a little attachment in Japan that it, it syncs to an app and it lets you either watch the news, play a video game, or play a song while you brush your teeth. And we're like, do we need this? <laughs> but then that's the point. It's like you got to keep kids on track sometimes, and that's a really good way to do it. And another one is a brain controlled joystick. So think about, you know, when you're gaming or yeah. even for um, the disabled that have the ability to do these kinds of controls. So the possibilities are really endless. And when we think about, you know, what's the one thing that should be smart, we sort of think of it more like what's the next thing that's going to be made smart. Because right. yeah. it's and pretty much it's an inevitability for just about anything that you, you have ever used. And I'll tell you, you mentioned, um, you touched on, you know, with our um, CES show, with the Intel Curie module, literally the, the little processor the size of a button yeah. um, going into things like a toothbrush or something like that. In addition to that technology, we have 5G communications coming out that we're investing in. And that's another technology that will make these, um, not only these um, devices smart, but make the connectivity and the experience much more seamless. Faster. So they're not just smart in, in isolation, they're smart together. together yeah. And yeah. they'll be able to share data back and forth with each other. So my glasses when I'm running are like, you forgot to brush your teeth yesterday, <laughs> the toothbrush told me. I'm very upset your breath smells bad. Um, well, thank you. I, th I think we're like just about out of time, but Thank you so much for yeah. coming in and stopping My by. My pleasure. Like, we find IoT, and I mean, we love future tech here, obviously. Like, everyone at home really loves future tech. So, thank you for coming by and talking to us about this. Um, stop Exciting by, stuff. Stop by any time. Well, you know, it's it's my pleasure I, on behalf of Intel. I think we're at a time where technology is being valued, not just for the devices that it makes, but for the experiences it makes possible. So And true. I think that's very exciting for us. So, very so cool. true. Thank you so much. Uh, that was the very lovely mm -hmm. Bridget Carl. Lynn stopping in, Managing Director, Internet of Things Group at Intel. We will be right back. We've got a lot more delightful things to, that are going to happen on this show that you're probably more familiar with. Stick around. So stick around.